through that kind of process, I somehow <laughs> was able to make my way through uh, three consecutive calls, uh, getting three yeses. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much one month after that, I signed my fourth one as well, uh, who was actually a lead from that month. Um, but they took, I think, maybe two or three calls to close. I'm very excited to uh, be on a call with one of my students, Danny Song, who scaled his agency from zero to 10K per month. Um, in a pretty short time period. So he's got a lot to share, uh, not only how he was able to scale uh, the agency while working on 9to5, um, also how he essentially got four consecutive uh, yeses. So we'll talk about what it, you know, what it kind of feels like to have sort of quick success, although there's a lot of work behind that mm -hmm. success. And, and we'll talk more about that. We'll also talk about how uh, he's actually partner with someone in my mentorship as well and how that whole dynamic works. I think that's going to be very valuable for a lot of you uh, who are in partnerships or thinking of starting the agency and a lot more because I don't want to spoil the beans, but uh, dude, it's awesome to uh, to have you uh, on an interview. Thanks, Ivey. Thanks, Ivey. It's awesome to be here. You know, i um, been looking forward to helping on this kind of interview since I started the mentorship. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I dropped some awesome stuff for everyone else that can learn from this as well. Uh, just a heads up, it is 11.30 p.m. for me. So <laughs> if I ever say something and I'm like going a little bit off topic, just uh, <laughs> yeah, forgive me for that. <laughs> Listen, brother, this is uh, for sure long overdue. And uh, I, I know I know you're going to bring the heat uh, as always. So I guess, you know, yeah. where I want to start is um, with your sort of quick success, right? Because I remember one month, uh, mm. there were like three boom posts. We call it a uh, boom post when someone wins and <laughs> we have a lot of those. But, you know, you have... Uh, you, you essentially assigned three clients in one single month. And then uh, right after that, one client um, in, in the next month, right? So mm -hmm. walk us through that feeling of essentially finally cr cracking the eyes, finally getting results. What did that feel like to get those four consecutive yeses? How yeah. did it affect your mindset? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, like it sounds like amazing, right? Um, but it definitely took a lot of work to get there. I know for a fact, the first ever time I even did a practice kind of demo call, right? Not even to a real uh, client, but just partnering with someone else and practicing. My voice was shaking. I couldn't mm -hmm. think of any questions to ask, um, all those different things, right? So I, d I definitely put in a lot of practice there, just try to get my nerves under control, get some structure behind what I want to find out between people. And I think just being able to approach those calls very genuinely and actually wanting to help people they can kind of see that as well as the passion right they don't want someone who's kind of just there for a quick money grab to be working with their brand they want someone who's going to be very involved um so i think yeah just through that kind of process i somehow <laughs> was able to make my way through uh three consecutive calls uh getting three yeses um and then yeah pretty much one month after that i signed my fourth one as well uh, who was actually a lead from that month um, but they took, I think, maybe two or three calls to close. So it took a bit longer than usual. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, what people need to understand is that one, when it rains, it pours in business, right? Like it, it, mm. it seems like nothing seems to be going your way. Well, in your case, you had those yeses from the very, very get yeah, right? Yeah. But I really want to make sure that people understand that there's obviously work that goes into that. Uh, you talked yeah. uh, about a few key things that really helped you when it came to to those sales calls. Walk us through mm. through a little bit more about that, right? What what do you think has, has been the biggest determinant uh, in you closing these calls? Is it your... Because obviously, I, I really resonate and we talk a lot about in the mentorship how it's it's all about mm. not being a fly-by-night opportunist, right? There's a lot of people that enter yeah. the SMA space, the agency space, uh, who are just trying to make a quick buck and it shows, right? It shows because yeah, they, exactly. they, they've got nothing of, of value to offer uh, to clients, right? You ask these people like, okay, cool. What value are you offering to the marketplace uh, apart from just hiring out a contractor who uh, knows a little bit about the service you're offering and trying to close these people on a call and they probably wouldn't have an answer for you, right? So yeah, walk us mm -hmm. through some of the key co key things that you learned on those calls that really helped you um, yeah. essentially close those first lines. Yeah. Um, I, I want to start by saying, of course, like one thing about me is that I definitely went into those calls like not an expert, right? Um, so I had a lot of knowledge still to learn, especially when I closed those first three clients. But I think one thing that it helped, uh, was basically, I didn't really have a limiting belief, right? Even though I did have, um, just a little bit more knowledge than those kind of brand owners that I was speaking with, that in itself was pretty much enough to get me over that hurdle 
to mm -hmm. basically like show them like, hey, there's value behind this. There's a lot of value that my team and I can add to your project. I think a thing that a lot of people start with is they just think like, oh, I'm not expert enough to uh, pretty much have the knowledge or have the value to actually make a difference to someone's brand, which is, you know, in some cases it might be true, but I know that I put in the work to, you know, yeah. build up that knowledge base, get everything going so that when I did onboard them, it was pretty much hitting the ground hard, just setting off and going. Yeah. Um, in terms of the sales side, um, I naturally just kind of had a very big interest towards sales. I've never done sales before. Um, and that is why I had uh, very shaky voices, uh, very a lot of nerves, all those things when I did hop on my practice calls. But I think the fact that I just wanted to keep improving and it was kind of like something I I wanted to prove to myself, like, yeah, I can do this. It's a fun thing to do. I can do it. Um, that definitely helped me through the calls as well. And um, within those actual sales calls, I think there's, a different approach that each person can take, right? And this depends on their personality sometimes as well. Uh, but someone can be very stone cold, whereas I feel like I was just someone who was able to hop on and they just could feel that this is a genuine conversation. It wasn't someone that's hopping on to push for a sale. I actually took, um, literally, I think each of those calls took over an hour. So it wasn't like, hey guys, we'll speak for 20 minutes and give me a yes or no. It was literally, I spoke to them for an over an hour um, this is back when I had like a free kind of zoom stuff as well. So it would literally cut mm. and I'd be like, let's hop back on the same link. Um, and yeah, we would just go through the whole process so that no, they get comfortable with me first as well. Um, and yeah, that means I can also have enough time to show them that what I've got. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I want to, first of all, acknowledge you, right. For the commitment that you've, that you've had towards improving, on calls, improving your 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 speech, mm. improve your tonality. I think you know it, it clearly shows uh, the way you carry yourself now, your your speech, your tonality, your body language, right? Uh, if you compare the version of Danny uh, song, you know, from oh, a, yeah. a few months ago, and you know, yeah, a, a few months ago to even the version of you now, like it, it comes to show that there's been work put in, right? There's been yeah, you know, seeking the, the right support, seeking by guidance, and, and and really the the work and the the obsession over getting better at your craft. And I think a lot of people that enter the space, I think they kind of lack. <laughs> the the understanding that you need to obsess over your craft, you need to obsess mm -hmm. over what you do on a daily basis. How can I get better? How can I make those marginal gains and marginal improvements? And I think you know it clearly shows, and I want to acknowledge you for that. Um, another thing that you know you, you said right is that most people don't feel like they know enough, and I think it it, it is just simply the case, right? I think most people just haven't yeah. taken the time to really truly know you know, what they're, the, the value that they're offering their clients, right? They haven't actually know, learned the service themselves. They haven't actually learned the skill set, the technical skill set, hmm. which gives them that ability and that, and that confidence. I want to ask you a little bit about also the the, the interactions with these e-com business owners, because we're all about hmm. e-commerce here, right? In the mentorship and and kind yeah. of what I preach. And, and I, I think, you know, it's, a, it's an incredible space, incredible industry. Uh, walk us through what you've learned from working with these e-com founders. I know it's a broad question, but what are some of the skills, yeah. maybe a specific econ founder that you've gone, look, that, that's been an incredible, you know, incredible mentor even, right? Um, who's yeah. taught me about a, a, a few things. I'm, I'm not sure if you've had those those sort of experiences, but I'd, I'd love to, you know, have the, the audience hear um, yeah. how blissful it is to to start those those uh, relationships and, and conversations with those econ founders. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll even take two steps back first and kind of share that there, there is definitely two sides of the coin when it comes to this, right? Um, there's sometimes when you do want to work with a client and they might seem like an awesome client during the call. Um, and then once the partnership begins, you realize that you you want to be giving 100% and they know you're putting in 100%. So all of a sudden they go to almost 0%. Um, sometimes that does happen in the industry, right? I'm not saying it will happen to everyone. Um, but yeah, those encounters are very normal. I think that was a great learning experience as well, just to know that like, like, hey, even with a great product, great e-com brand, sometimes it still comes down to does that CEO, does that entrepreneur have the kind of drive to work with you as well to make this even more of a success? Yeah. Right. Luckily, that was just one encounter. All my other clients have been really, really great. Um, a lot of them also give me referrals, which is, you know, for them, it, it was very like um, a place of abundance, I would say, because I didn't ask for it. Um, and they would come and offer referrals because they're just kind of happy with firstly communication, um, but also the service delivery. Uh, I would say the fact that you get to work with such a wide range of e-commerce brands, you definitely get 
more insight than if you're just trying to learn from I don't know like YouTube videos or uh, watching people just kind of explaining their brand or something right because there's all those logistics shipment um, branding uh, graphic design web design all these different components you kind of start dipping your toes into everything um, and it just opens your eyes to <laughs> a whole new world right especially uh, from the world that I came from which was nothing online basically so yeah definitely uh, dive into the deep end for that one I think that's such a great point, right? The fact that the, one of the great things, and at least for me, probably if not the greatest thing about being an e-commerce growth partner is that it lends itself so well into, you know, having an actual career, right? Having something that can sustain mm -hmm. you for the next 15, 20 years if, if, if you so uh, uh, wish to, right? Because you're actually learning yeah. technical skill sets. You're learning from these founders, all these different things that, it, you know, that, that uh, come with growing an e-commerce brand, right? And at the end of the day, you know, if you can take the capital that you built, the, the the team that you have right now, right? And then all these skills that's mm -hmm. like logistics, shipping, product development, like you said, you can take this and then build your own brands. I think that's, that's while still being an e-commerce growth partner and, and, and working with these incredible e-commerce founders, I think that's such a massive win. As you said, you know, there's yeah. nothing about, uh, there's something about having that, that experience, right? The, the knowledge that comes from experience is completely different to to something that uh, comes from books, right? Or or, or comes from yeah, from yeah. Uh, right. It, it's it's about dipping your 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 uh, feet in the water and, and really learning from them and seeing them in action, right? Logistics, you know, breaks and they have back orders and how do they deal with that and mm -hmm. customer service yeah. and how do they deal with like, you know, whatever it is, right? I think I, I think that's such an yeah. incredible learning experience. Yeah, and just I guess you do kind of act almost like a central hub. Right, because when you work with one certain client, maybe you can take like what they're doing very well as well and help out a different client and just be like, hey, you know, mm. my partner over here is doing this new thing or they've tried something different and it's working. Let's test it out with your brand. Let's see if it works. And then it's just a very collaborative space. So yeah, I'd say that's another advantage. A hundred percent, man. And another point, bring the heat, right? Uh, which is the fact that yeah. you're you're essentially building out this, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you, you can transfer it, right? It's transferable skills and, and transferable knowledge that you can apply for other yeah. brands. You kind of act like a, a hub and that's why your value as a, as a, as an e-com growth partner increases so much, right? Because you've been so agile. Mm -hmm. If you look at, you know, let's just say you go down the traditional route of becoming a, a head of e-commerce or a, you know, e-commerce e growth hacker or, or e-com marketer for mm -hmm. a brand, right? At the end of the day, the problem with that is you're only working with one brand. Right. And so yeah. there's only so much that you're going to learn. There's only so, so many problems that you're going to solve. However, when you've worked with a myriad of different brands, you've seen so many different problems. You've, you've been through so many scenarios that you can just go and tell a client like, Hey, we've been through this. This is what, how, how yeah. we sold it with one of my clients and how my client is, is doing like, you know, my client is questioning it with this strategy and then you apply to, to them. Right. And I think that's such a key also, um, you know, sale point, right. In, in these calls, mm -hmm. what makes us different to, Maybe a, an agency that is a, a traditional agency that is working with local businesses, pizzerias, and uh, e-commerce, and all these different brands. And yeah. also, what makes this difference to what, what makes this different to, you know, an employee? Why should I hire you as a, an e-commerce growth partner instead of an employee or just a traditional, you know, agency? And that yeah. is one of the reasons, right? Because we've we've garnered so much knowledge, so much experience from like working with these with these incredible brands. Mm, exactly. Exactly. I think when you when you have that confidence after getting like just one client as well or even when you have a team behind you you kind of already have that backing like hey we have experience that we can just apply to this brand like we're not coming in here to test the waters out and waste money we're really just coming in here to apply the knowledge we have and what's working in the industry and then just getting results yeah, yeah. it's more like a, a proven process and i think that yeah. it makes the the consecutive sales so much easier um I want to talk a little bit about your your decision to partner with one of um you know one of the the students in the program uh, Eugenio mm -hmm. shout out to him uh, great dude uh, uh, also fellow yeah, Spaniard uh, and you know it, what what it seems like I'm sure there's there's been uh, bumps in the road but what it seems like it's it's a, it's been a, a fruitful partnership and you guys have learned both a lot about each other and and working in in you know collaboratively right so your agency yeah. Alka Media. Um, Merge with his agency Weko, right? Uh, which is cool, yeah. by the way. The names like kind of uh, it's, yeah, they it's happen Oko to kind or of like... it's it's Oko, right? That's that's how yeah, you pronounce okay. it. Yeah, Oko. Yeah, yeah Oko and Weko, like <laughs> that that that's cool. The, <laughs> yeah. the fact that I don't know, if, you guys did that separately, right? Yeah, separate, separate. Yeah, we don't even know each other when we started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So 
you know, one of the great things about, I love about uh, the mentorship program is the fact that you meet a lot of people and, and it gives you these networking opportunities, right? Walk us through the decision to first partner and then we'll talk a little bit about um, mm. the other stuff. But why did you decide to go, okay, we're both having, you know, we're both having success, right? We're both having clients. Yeah. Let's partner up. Let's 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 uh, join forces. Why why that decision? I think during the time period when I was starting to obviously handle the clients that I had, uh, me and Yehinia were both kind of active in the school community. So we both knew that each other, like each other, were getting great results. We were doing different things, um, and then yeah, we kind of just connected. Uh, through LinkedIn as well, started having conversations, talking about like, hey, what's working right now for me in terms of, let's say, prospecting? And then I would share, hey, what's working with me for sales? And I think we just kind of identified, all right, Eugenio is pretty good at prospecting and outreach, and I'm pretty good at sales, mm -hmm. right? And so those are the two kind of pieces of puzzle that fit quite well together. Um, and then at the same time, like I said at the start of this call as well, I'm in New Zealand, so... Most of the clients I work with, I either have to wake up at you know six thirty a.m. or hop on calls around like ten p.m. or something, um, and it just so happens that yeah, um, people in Spain, Madrid as well, they're usually about either eleven, twelve, or thirteen hours difference, depending on the time of year, um, and that just means that we have basically more team members who's able to provide a service to our client. Uh, so yeah, we definitely didn't just snap our fingers and say let's join up. Uh, we probably had calls for like a month straight just talking about what would this look like how would things go um where should we take things right what's kind of like your non-negotiables what's my non-negotiables i think that's very important when it comes to a partnership you just need to lay everything out very clearly from the start and yeah i mean we both didn't have much to lose because we're just both at a position where we wanted to scale um we were both had a lot of trust in each other as well so we were just like yeah, why not? Let's give this a shot. And yeah, we've we've got started working with some really, really cool brands since then. So yeah, it's been a very fruitful journey. I think um yeah, there's there's a few key points that that you mentioned in there. And just looking at uh your initial position, right? You were both getting results and you both had some you know mm -hmm. different value, like a uh, different value to add, right? He was great at prospecting, he was crushing it there, like booking a lot of calls. You were great at sales, right? Because pretty much, yeah. you know, for the first four calls that you jumped, well, for the first three calls that you jumped on, boom, uh, uh, yeah. you know, sealed the deal, right? And so I think that's such a key thing for people to understand because I, I feel like a lot of people look into a partnership from a very get go. Uh, hey, let me just partner with someone else and start the agency, whereas. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily think that to be an e-com growth partner, you have to uh, be with someone else from the very get-go, right? Uh, mm, I think yeah. a lot of people that make those decisions from the start, they're more based out of fear, right? Like, I don't want to, mm. you know, they think they're going to fail on their own or at least, you know, I'll have someone to, you know, a shoulder to cry on, whatever it is, right? Because um, I've, I've definitely yeah. been there with my first business, not an e-com growth partner, but with my first business, an e-com brand. I think I got into a partnership out of fear more than anything, right? But I think the the, the mm. difference with with you guys is you both went your separate ways, you crushed it, and then out of you know more like inspiration than desperation, you were like, yeah. um, you know, let's join forces uh, and and make yeah. us even stronger. I think that's such a, a key point. Yeah, because I feel like one thing to understand is, you know, at the end of the day, there's just one of me, one of him. We were both getting good results, so we just thought why not explore what would happen if we combined strengths and then scaled even faster, right? Um, because I think there's a saying where it's kind of like, um, you know, obviously keep your strengths and then try to bring your weaknesses kind of closer so there's a small gap. But I'm pretty sure there was an even smarter person who just said like, you know, make sure your strengths are even stronger and then find someone else who can literally just make up for your weaknesses because now you're just both working at 100% rather than... Mm -hmm. Yes, like 50% each or something. So that's kind of like the approach we took. And we were just like, yeah, let's go both at 100%. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your job, right? Because again, a lot mm -hmm. of people love to make excuses as to why they shouldn't start uh, as an e-com growth partner, why they shouldn't start uh, a business. Yeah. Here you are with a nine to five job, crushing it, um, doing a, a billion different things, it seems, right? Uh, and, and so I want to I wanna get your experience as to 
what it mm. what it was like starting with uh, a nine to five job, and it's, it's not an easy one. I believe you're yeah. doing engineering, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, walk us through that experience and how you made it work. I think that's going to add a lot of value to to people who are stuck in that in that position. Yeah. So, I've definitely had a lot of conversations with other people as well who are like you know either starting the nine to five and wanting to start an agency at the same time, or they're in a position where they also have that nine to five and they want to uh, find time for the agency. And it is a struggle. Um, I think for me, when I did first start everything out, I was able to kind of enter the agency space with a lot of discipline, which probably was a big benefit for me in terms of time management and just sorting out what I had to get done throughout the day. Um, And it wasn't like, you know, all of a sudden I woke up and I was like, cool, I'm going to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. It was probably like a good three months where um literally gymmed six times a week uh six times a week yeah um every day after work and then after work i would literally just hop on my computer and just educate myself not only just on smma like actual like creating a marketing agency or growth agency but literally <laughs> i watched videos about like email marketing um drop shipping right just everything online that you could think of um because i knew i had to like at least set a foundation first before i jumped into the deep end and after you know a lot of kind of just absorbing knowledge i was like you know what i've got my routine set up for my day i know that nine to five is when i obviously have to commit to this other thing that means you know before 9 a.m and after 5 p.m i have all the time in the world and it's up to me right i can obviously choose to sit on my ass eat some chips drink and then just not worry about anything Mm -hmm. um but i think there was just kind of like a very very strong burning desire in me to you know, finally apply the knowledge that I've been learning, obviously put it in a more kind of organized way and then see what I can do with that. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in terms of my nine to five, it's, um, I definitely had a period where I was like, man, I'm feeling a little bit burnt out now. Uh, the good thing is though, obviously you have your weekends where you can kind of just purely focus on the agency. And I felt that was like the best time to start building because that's when literally all distractions are off the table. Um, I, t- I took myself off social media as well during that initial phase when I really had to, you know, pick up my pace and start building things. And I felt like that was like, yeah, just a really, uh, I would call it the golden time or monk mode, right? I'm sure that's a term everyone knows uh, where, yeah, everything was zoned out. I just knew exactly what I had to get done every single day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you have like a routine, um, even like just writing out a list before you go to bed and then rewriting that list, but organizing it, and priority when you wake up in the morning just helps sort out the day right um and uh, yeah i wouldn't say every day is perfect but when you know there's stuff to get done um and you have a list written out you know that satisfying of crossing uh crossing it off that's kind of like what i just work towards yeah, yeah day by day and I, I love it and and it wasn't always like this obviously you have you know you told me briefly um you know your your backstory back in the day and and uh walk us through that right because you weren't always the disciplined you know yeah. signing client uh nine to five you know crushing it there as well like you weren't always the Danny song you're, you're currently at, uh right now right so walk yeah. us through your before state or where you were at before starting yeah. as an e-com growth partner and you know making the decision to really design the life of, of your dreams and and, and go for yeah. it yeah i mean uh, all started when I was uh, three years old. and <laughs> uh, It wasn't that early. Um, I, I would say probably throughout uni is I definitely had like an entrepreneurship kind of fire in me, right? I, I definitely wanted to build something for myself or at least explore if I can do it. Because uh, for me, I come from like a sports background. I was basically like a tennis athlete. So very competitive. It's also a very solo sport. You're the only person on the court. So a lot of mentality kind of things come into play as well. Mm-hmm. But I think throughout uni, because everyone around me, all my closest friends were pretty much just going down the same path. I naturally felt like, oh, I'm doing the right thing if I'd follow that path as well. Um, but it literally wasn't until that final year of uni when it was time for everyone to be getting their jobs. Like I had three job offers, which is very, very nice. I picked up the one that I liked the most and I literally felt nothing. <laughs> like everyone's usually happy when they you know finish uni get a job right because that's the start of their career but I was like you know it, it's cool that I'm now stepping into the working life right 
but at the same time, I was still feeling like I'm a little bit unfulfilled, right? At least half of me, that kind of entrepreneurial side is very unfulfilled. Um, so I would say, yeah, when I started, like back then, it was very much just nine to five. And then I would just go out, enjoy myself, drink with friends, just no structure to the day. Um, it got to the point probably where it was just, I was going out so often. And when I would just pick up a drink, even when I I'm just sitting with my mates. I would just kind of internalize and think to myself, like, what am I doing? Right. Like, this is just on repeat. Nothing is changing. There's no improvements. It almost feels the same thing as just being stuck in the kind of rat race kind of thing as well. Right. You're just, yeah, th there's no change happening at all. And I think that just became such an uncomfortable feeling in me that I was like, all right, I'm going to completely just stop this. I went basically on a, um, sober period i think that's what you call it where i just yeah i didn't touch alcohol i just thought you know what i'm just gonna gym get back into shape um just focus on work and then educate myself on the side and that's probably just what led up to the more disciplined version of me mm -hmm. coming out of all that yeah do you think why, why was that decision made right because most people watching this even they're stuck in that cycle where they're not decisive enough to truly go for it, right? They even might, might lie to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we love to lie to, our, to ourselves, right? We, we love to tell ourselves, oh, you mm -hmm. know, I'm, 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 I'm doing it, right? Like I'm, I'm starting my business. Like, you know, look at me watching YouTube videos yeah. and educating myself, but like, you're not truly going full in. You're, you're still, you're still like one, one, you know, foot in one uh, foot out in your comfort zone. What made you make that decision? Be decisive about like, okay, this needs to stop. Was there a, um, yeah. Was it like just you couldn't bear the pain anymore of lying to, to yourself or, or not living your your dream life or what was that point uh, that 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 switch that that uh, mm -hmm. that made you you know be decisive about what you wanted in, in life? I think that's a very very good question. Probably a lot of different factors that contributed to it. I think it was yeah the the build up of um, that kind of life that I had before starting the agency right just kind of. Uh, working, going nine to five, and then just going out, partying, drinking. Um, for me, I just felt like this is going to lead to nowhere, basically, right? This is not going to build towards the life that I want for myself or uh, for my future family and things like that, right? Or even my existing family, right? Because I obviously want to be able to help them out with different things. So that was probably one of the underlying things that just made the that current state, right? We, we would call it the current state, feel very uncomfortable. Um, I would also say it was just, yeah, like everyone around me, <laughs> it's going to sound pretty funny, but everyone around me started becoming like couples. So um, like all my friends that I came into relationships and I just got out of one. So like they were kind of going into this settling down period, whereas I was entering the more like, all right, I can explore a lot of different things now. Like the responsibility of having to obviously kind of, you know, being in a relationship is different to when you're single as well. So I was much more risk adverse with uh, my money because starting a business is, of course, you know, you have to be good with your financials. You have to know what you're investing in. Mm -hmm. So I was able to kind of just take that risk in myself, um, at least because I think I know that I can always prove to myself if I can do something or not, right? Um, it links back to uni. I, I think the second year of uni, my grades were crap. Um, because I started having fun because first year was so easy I thought I could just have fun the second year um, grades were crap and so my like final year the the one that was like weighted the most I was like you know what I'm just gonna prove to myself that I can get like really really good results um, which I did and so I was like you know what if I just set my mind to something I'm pretty sure I can make make it succeed I think that's what really self-confidence is about as well right it's not like Hey, I've had, I have a really good car or a big house. It's more like when you set your mind to something and you actually make it happen, you know that you can hold yourself accountable. Um, and that means you can literally apply that to every other area in your life. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, just a, a mixture of pain and just knowing that I can actually do it just yeah. made me go over the fence. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's such a great point. It's not about the external things that you garner uh, throughout the process, which mm. is cool, but it's the inner transformation. It's looking at yourself in the mirror and be yeah. like, I'm, I'm being proud of the person you're becoming. And knowing that you have this, this toolbox of, of, of skills that yeah. no one can take away from you. Right. And that's mm. why when I look at the SMA space right now, I see a lot of people who are not building those skills. They're just focusing on 
not having anything of value to offer to clients outsourcing, yeah. you know, straight out the bat and not knowing anything when it comes to their service and, and their true value to these clients. And, and that's a dangerous position to be in because you're not going through that personal transformation. I think what gives you a lot of confidence mm. as well is you knowing that you have those skills that you've built throughout the journey, not only exactly. discipline, not only, um, you know, confidence in, in, in your ability to speak on sales calls, not only, you know, your, your very structured routines and, and your uh, perseverance, but also your, your technical skills that, that, that you can use for, for this client, the client. And when you can look at yourself in the mirror and, and be part of the person you're becoming uh, and, and mm -hmm. be part of the tra personal transformation that you're making, I think that's a, it's a great feeling. Uh, the external is cool, but nothing I think can compare it to that. Yeah. Yeah. I think being able to see, I, I would say even literally after I joined your mentorship, right. I was able to see like a very big shift in the way that my like kind of day to day looked, obviously, um, it's because I knew I had to get stuff done, but it's also like, I would say for a whole year, I never really was able to just wake up without an alarm clock, which is very weird, right? Because usually, you know, I'm young, I, sh I should be able to just wake up <laughs> and attack yeah. the day. Uh, but I think it was because I didn't just have any purpose behind what I was doing before. And then all of a sudden I had this agency that I wanted to build and literally I didn't need an alarm i went to sleep on time i woke up on time literally just attacked every day um and that was yeah that felt so refreshing because i was like wow this is what um this is what high performance feels like mm -hmm. and yeah i was away from that for quite a bit yeah yeah waking up being passionate about what you do is is uh is uncomparable i think that's that's true wealth right because the yeah. money's cool at the end of the day right but if you make the money doing something that you hate or that you're not passionate about, that doesn't truly fulfill you, that doesn't truly add value to people, or, or you're seeing where you're seeing a tangible impact, I think it's a, it's, it doesn't have as, as much longevity. Because as you said, when you wake up and you're just like pumped up, right? Let's get let let's get yeah. this right. Um, I think I think that's a completely different feeling. For sure, for sure. And I think as well, the people around me were very much in that moment of let me just wake up at seven o'clock so I can make it to my nine or five and things like that whereas I was trying to wake up even earlier so that yeah it, it would take me like around leaving the house around 7 a.m as well to get to my job but then if I woke up just an hour earlier then I get an extra hour out of my day compared to other people um, and it just felt really good uh, not because I'm comparing it to other other the people but it's just like oh well i was able to squeeze out that time to work on something i'm building for myself yeah that's a great point and on that topic i want to talk about friends right and and maybe not the best influences there's nothing wrong with not having friends that are as entrepreneurial minded as you like <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I don't buy into into that bullshit of like just cut all your friends who are not you know high performance people and, and go-getters because everyone has you know, if they could be questioned in a completely different area, right? I think the key yeah, is yeah. like making sure that your core circle, they don't bring you down, they elevate you in, in different ways, but they maybe add value in, in different areas of your life. I want to talk about, uh, to, to wrap it up, I want to talk about your decision to go solo. I think that's a very scary thing for, for people. Cut out mm. parties with the homies, cut out the drinks with <laughs> with the boys. Like, how am I going to, how yeah. am I going to do that? Right. Um, and, 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 and so they fear like going solo, maybe the fear of missing out kicks in and uh, not only yeah. that, but they get dragged into things that they shouldn't be doing because of these bad influences or people that are on a complete different path that they, they don't want to be at, uh, they don't want to be in. Right. What allowed you mm. or what helped you go solo and how did it feel uh, to, to go solo? Was that scary at all? Or how did you manage that, that time period? Mm. There's, there's definitely a lot to unpack here. I would say, first thing to set is like around when it happened right it was actually uh start of summer so that's literally when people are going to prepare for their christmas breaks this is when it's summer new zealand so it's like that november december january period so literally it was so tempting that period because everyone's like hey let's go to the beach let's go to this event let's go there there and i'm i'm just like sorry guys <laughs> maybe next year um I think it was just because I was so like determined on making sure that I can get this to work that I didn't really care too much if I just missed one thing here or one thing there, right? Because these are my good mates. They're going to be around. They understand. There's always going to be next time, right? Literally, uh, maybe even four months later, 
right? I can wait till that. So that's completely fine. I think to me, I was just able to understand that my time right now is much, much more important than one night of drinking because yeah, one night of drinking can just mess up like two whole days basically afterwards as well. Now, um, in terms of like the people around me, I would say I was pretty fortunate where like all my friends were just very supportive of what I was doing. No one was like, you know, um, I don't know what the word is. No one was like putting me down or or mocking what I was doing, right? Everyone was just like, oh, cool. It was very cool. We want to see what, what um, happens here. Let us know if you need help, all these different things. So I had a really good group um, who were just keen to help me out if I needed um, anything. Um, and the thing about New Zealand in general is I feel like we, everyone here knows that we have a case of like tall poppy syndrome, which is when you kind of stick out from everyone else and you start succeeding and getting results, people normally like to pull you down or they like to judge you and just, you know, uh, keep you so that you're like everyone else in a way. And that is what I feared a lot. Um, I probably do still fear it because I know I should be posting way more content than I am right now. Yeah. Um, but I think just having my inner circle where everyone was very much just encouraging me, um, supporting me, it was a very good time to have that because now it was just like cool uh i can just go for it and i think as well i just realized at the end of the day who cares right like the most famous people like when they do something controversial it probably sticks in the news for like a week and then everyone forgets afterwards anyways so it's kind of like even if i messed up somehow or i posted some video and it just was crap it's fine right like everyone's gonna forget it they're gonna go back to their own life um, they're just going to worry about what's going on in their own kind of space anyways so I think that's what kind of got me through it and just knowing that yeah I can obviously just hang out with them later when I'm uh, when I've got a successful agency when I'm you know making you know the money that I'm making and stuff like that mm -hmm. so yeah I would say that's most rounded answer I could probably give for that actually yeah I think that's a, a great place to to wrap it up uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed the the conversation I want to acknowledge you, man, for uh, for the journey. Uh, you know, the the your improvement and your transformation is very very clear, and you know, there's no doubt as to why you're getting the results that you're getting. And it's been great being your mentor. I'm I'm proud of you, and uh, yeah, I, I yeah I really, you know, to to your continued success, I think you're gonna absolutely crush it. I think this is just a start, and um, yeah, I think it's, it's been an incredible conversation, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I've enjoyed this conversation as well. I think uh, definitely I'll continue to be a success story for you and hopefully that we can take this even further. Awesome, brother. Cool. Then, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk in a bit. And um, thank you guys for, for watching. Uh, I'll see you uh, I'll see you when I see you, Danny. So that's that for the conversation with Danny. Now, if you want to catch more trainings on how to become an e-commerce growth partner, how to build tangible technical skill sets without going any further, the most valuable skill set for the next 15, 20 years, which is growing things online. There's going to be a link down below to my free Facebook community where I'm going like pretty much daily on the dropping value bones that I'm not posting anywhere else. And there will also be links in the description if you want to check out what I do as an e-commerce growth partner uh, as well as the mentorship. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.